of the planning videos, this is the layout that I see trip people up the most. Whether you have a Hobonichi Cousin or a Weeks or a whole different other planner, the yearly index page seems to be the one you care about the least. I'm gonna show you how I use mine, give you some tips on how you can use yours in your planner and let's just get into it. So unless you plan on using the index page as an actual index or some sort of variation of the bullet journal method, I recommend using this page as a habit tracker, but with a few conditions. Before we start anywhere, when you think about these pages or just your notebook in general, I want you to remember this quote that has really helped me, and that is, a simple spread is better than an empty spread is better than an ineffective spread. What I mean by that is essentially nothing I do in this layout is particularly groundbreaking or original, but it's simple and it's effective and it's really valuable to me. I use this as a single habit tracker. And the main habit that I wanted to track this year was when I went to the gym. I made the habit a little bit more broad. I put moving my body with purpose for at least 20 minutes. Um, that could be lifting, that could be a yoga class, that could be going for a hike, whatever. I didn't want to minimize it to only going to the gym, so I kind of broadened it. But the basic function of this layout is to see how many days I participate in some sort of physical activity. I like to use my index for a current habit that I already kind of have good consistency with. And I like to use my weekly pages for the habits that are a little bit more experimental, a little bit more seasonal for me, and kind of the, the more like minutia of my day. For me, working out is something that I've been doing for years. It's something very sacred to me, and most important, it's something that brings me joy, which I think is the biggest part of this spread. My weekly trackers are for the boring things like watering plants, uh, washing my sheets, flossing teeth, whatever but this page i just only want to track my fitness and that's it and i think it's a lot easier to use this page when the habit you are tracking is something you actually enjoy versus tracking like chores or you know appointments or something like that you'll also see on some of the months well all of the months so far i have tracked on the days or i have highlighted on the days um, i'm also tracking my cycle and the reason I think this works for me, being able to track two things at once, is that my cycle isn't really a habit. It's just something that happens whether I want it to or not. And so I like being able to look at it in this kind of view. And I can just kind of compare my cycle month to month compared to like tracking it on a monthly calendar. When using this page, I really, really recommend sticking to one or two at most maybe things that you're wanting to track just so it doesn't get too overwhelming and it's hard to backlog if you need to um, and things like that. So those are the two things that I track on this. In the black, I mark out the row of the day for when I go to the gym and then I highlight the little day when my cycle comes. So for example, this morning I went to the gym. So I will go in here and find October 10th, which is right here and I we'll fill in this row. That is all that I do. It's quick and easy and it takes me five seconds. This is not a spread I typically have open just laying on my desk. I don't reference it a lot. And so for me, I need this process to be really quick and easy. I also think it's important to mention when you're going into this page to kind of check in with yourself and your intentions and your motivations. When it comes to habit tracking, this process should not be something that makes you feel bad about yourself. And I suggest if you're feeling a negative way about yourself based on the information you're recording, to reach out to outside resources to kind of help shift that mindset. For me, the goal is not to have 100% of these boxes filled out because I know that's not sustainable, nor is it realistic. The goal of this page is just to see a behavior over a long period of time. I just wanna mention that because I think a lot of people when they're habit tracking, when they see all of the days they did not complete a habit, subconsciously it can kind of have this negative effect on us and it can make us feel like failures you live in a society or if you're in america at least in our society a lot of your value is highly based on your productivity and what you're putting out and how busy you are and what you're doing and so i think sometimes for us when we set out to complete 
layouts like these, when we don't complete a task or when we don't fill out a day after a certain amount of time, it can be really discouraging and then we fall off completely. So I really recommend kind of looking at this spread, however you choose to use it, very indifferently. For me, I look at it indifferently. It's not good, it's not bad, it just is. It's just data to me. And the cool thing about this spread, I think compared to like my weeks where it's a little bit more like customized and personal, is this spread allows me to kind of have this like outer body experience where I'm observing a behavior of myself on paper, but it feels very like zoomed out. It, and it's just really cool. And it's cool to see patterns and stuff like that. So I just wanna throw that out there to just check in with yourself and your intentions and your motivations when it comes to this layout. And also I have the Hobonichi Weeks with me as well. The same process works for the weeks or any other planner that has this sort of yearly index you can do the same thing so if i was to track this habit in my weeks planner i would just fill in you know the little boxes i would do the exact same process so whatever planner you have you can kind of still stick with the same system if you are interested in using this index in this type of way i'm going to give a couple tips that really helped me so First tip is keep it as simple as possible. I am someone who gets very bored very quickly. I also am someone who's very impulsive. So something I think I might like that I do one month, I'm gonna hate the next month. So I like to keep it as simple as possible. That way I know I can be consistent with it and I know that I'm not gonna get sick of it later. Second tip is going to be just to choose one to two things that you wanna observe or track. Again, only choose things that actually matter to you or habits that you kind of already have in place or habits that bring you joy. It would be really ineffective for me to use this page for every day I floss my teeth. Um, maybe flossing your teeth is fun for you, but for me it's not. It's kind of a chore. And so in theory, it would be cool or it would be insightful to track that and see you know, how many times a year I floss my teeth. But I know because that's a activity that I don't really care about per se, I'll probably track it for a month and then I'm going to lose interest and I'm just going to stop. So only choose one to two things that you actually want to observe and kind of sit with those things for a couple days and see if you still feel the same and like really get that um, locked down before you do it in practice. Third tip is determining the most satisfying way to record your data. For me, I am someone who finds a lot of satisfaction in checking off boxes, um, you know, filling in boxes, whatever. That's something that gives me the biggest dopamine rush when I do this and I look forward to going to the gym because in the back of my mind, I know when I'm done at the gym, I can come back and fill in one of these boxes. That might look different for you. For you, maybe the most satisfying way to record data is to highlight the row or put a sticker on the row or just cross it out completely. Whatever you find brings you the most joy or just like the most dopamine, if that makes sense, do that for this page. So those are the three main tips. As you can see here, I do not use my top and bottom boxes. Again, I know myself way too well. I'm an Aries, so I'm very impulsive and I do like to change my mind a lot. And so I didn't want to go into this year with the pressure of having to fill out this top and bottom box because I was scared it would overwhelm me. So I didn't do that this year. Maybe I'll do it next year. But if you are someone who is interested in utilizing these two spaces, this is what I would do. So for the top spaces, I would use these, if you can kind of see, maybe let me do this one. There are these three little check boxes. And then in the weeks, I think there's just one. It's a very small space, but in the cousin at least, I would utilize this top space for monthly goals. Um, if we wanted to use me for an example, if I am tracking the gym, the three goals that I could have would be, I want to go to the gym three times a week. I want to go to the gym every Monday and I want to do at least two outdoor hikes or something like that. So you could use this top box for that. Last way I would use these boxes as just action items or reminders to help you. So for example, in July, I knew I had a wedding. So maybe I would have put wedding in the beginning of the month, make sure you plan out gym at hotel or something like that. 
August, I could have put have hand surgery at the end of the month. So prep for that, whatever. You could just put reminders for yourself. And then for the bottom spaces, you do get a little bit more space than the top. And then I'll show in the weeks. The weeks actually doesn't even have a bottom. So keep that in mind. But if you're in the cousin, there is quite a bit of space. So I would recommend using these as a monthly recap. At the end of the month, you could write down what worked, what went well, what didn't go well, things like that. You could put important observations or footnotes. So we use August as an example again. You could put didn't go for a period of time, had hand surgery, you know, was was resting. April, I didn't go because I was in New York. If that's important to you, you can use these boxes for that. I think it will be cool to look back a couple years down the line when I look back at these. It's nice to have a little bit more context, a little more pieces of the puzzle to see why my year looks like it did. And the final way I would use these boxes is monthly totals. If you're a numbers person, this might be satisfying to you. So maybe you don't have a certain number or a target you're trying to reach with your habits but maybe at the end of the month you can count them up and total them at the bottom so i could count these up and say 12 out of 31 days i went to the gym august i went five out of 31 days and you can kind of compare them i think that's kind of a cool way of doing this because visually i can see which months were busier than others, but it's cool to see it in numbers because then you can look at trends and see if certain times of the years or seasons or periods of your life are busier than others. You may notice I have January, February, and March of 2024 filled out. I have the spring edition planner, so I got this specific cousin in April, and I already had data from the previous three months, and I know I'm not gonna be in this cousin come January of 2024 so I just like backlogged into here the biggest thing going into this these pages I recommend is just like keeping it as bare and minimal as possible and I feel like you'll find it's way easier to stick to when you keep it that way and this doesn't have to be a page that you embellish or decorate a lot it can just simply be data recording and that's totally fine. I'm gonna stick with the same method into 2024 because it's worked well for me and I think it is really cool once I am done with the entire year I'll be able to look at it from kind of this yearly glance. I'll be able to look at it at a six month period and I'll be able to see quarterly and also just compare month by month and see you know what are my good months versus my bad my bad months. It's been a really cool thing. That's all I have for the index page. I'll see you guys next time.